Hello everybody and welcome to our today's webinar, which is about Hardware Spice. Um, it's a webinar of our fellow uh, Timo, Timo Karash. He's Interax Automotive Spice, a principal assessor and instructor, and he's as well a member of the Interax Mechanical Spice and Cybersecurity Working Groups. Um, automotive spice is about system development in, in general. And if we speak of system development, um, hardware development is a part of our system. And this is why, um, why hardware spice came up to, to close this gap because um, mechanical spice is, uh, in, in, uh, is in, um, on the market since a while. But now, in terms of uh, filling the gap in the plug-in system of automotive spice, hardware spice has been introduced. So uh, this webinar is a, is some sort of an introduction to uh, this hardware spice model, um, and um, Timo will give you an overview on this model and uh, will cover all as well these uh, specifics and special features of this model. Before Timo starts, I want to give a uh, speaker demand. Please ensure and check you are muted to avoid we have will have background noises. Um, and you have the possibility to ask questions during the webinar in the chat and afterwards uh, vocally uh, if necessary. OK, so then I would give uh, I would take over to, to Timo and let's start. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for your introduction, Horst. Yeah, and welcome everybody from my side. My name is Timo Karas, and uh, welcome to our webinar for Hardware Spice when electronics development becomes part of our system. So, as Horst just told you already, so this webinar is about Hardware Spice. So, I would like to give you an introduction, an overview of uh, what is defined in this specific model of the Spice world. And um, we will uh, see some, some details, some background information about how this is typically uh, implemented and integrated in the, in the processes of the companies. And last but not least, I would like to uh, even give you some hints about the implementation of Hardware Spice. And this is where you come in place. Um, this is why I would like to welcome you to really ask questions um uh, uh, at the end of the webinar that we maybe even have a little bit of discussion about what i'm going to present you here um yeah hopefully first of all let's talk about the title hopefully you uh, have been a little bit puzzled maybe when you read hey when electronics development becomes part of our system uh, isn't it always part of our system yeah the system is not new but um what i mean by this title is uh there had been a lot of changes during the the last years and this is when you look back in in the former times let's say yeah uh what is development uh development Man was uh, strictly uh, dividing the uh, disciplines about there is software development, there is electronic development, there is mechanical development, and at the end somebody comes and uh, here creates a beautiful product out of all these parts. Um, but um, there are a couple of changes, and this is a little bit what this picture should show you. Um, maybe to open this with a, a short example uh, out of one of my projects, and this was at the beginning where. Um, the um here yeah, uh the someone from the from the management of the company just introduced everybody to um, new processes new world of spice processes and he just showed a picture like this and told everybody hey look this is what the future might look like and um, to be honest i have no idea what the future really will look like but i can tell you one thing our product that we're developing today is not in this system anymore, yeah? Because our product needs to change, and this is why we need to change, and why our uh, development need to change. 
let's try to see a little bit what really have uh, or have changed during the last years. And um, so this is electronics, yeah, electronic development. And uh, the big challenges we are focusing uh, during the last years is, first of all, uh, system architecture, yeah, that you know when you uh, deal already with a system architecture that you need alternative uh, solutions. Uh, you can handle in software, you can handle in hardware, yeah, you can have different ideas um, need to get smaller, need to get uh, um and not that heavy anymore here. Yeah? So alternative situations are a topic we need to deal with. Uh, then the hardware mechanical interfaces, a lot of interfaces that we need to, to cover somewhere in, in the development and the, um, yeah, the hardware mechanical interfaces. This is why I said it's not that you can divide the parts of development anymore. They are integrated here yeah? and you need to ensure that this fits together already during a very early phase of your development. Because otherwise, uh, you will see uh, you will have problems with your interfaces, and you will need to redesign your complete product. And this is, I'm pretty sure you know already, this is something that will be very, very expensive typically. Uh, next challenge, hardware software interfaces. So it's all about interfaces here. Yeah? The complete system architecture is about interfaces. And I think it is our task to identify those interfaces as soon as possible. Uh, especially to identify, for example, uh, alternative uh, solutions here. Uh, we have uh, planning of system releases. Uh, this is a challenge as well that we uh, need to know um, what version of our hardware need to be available at what moment in time during uh, development to be able to deliver the service or this the system with its functions as it is expected by a customer, for example. We need have growing functionality, yeah. Uh, so um, more and more functions are within one car. Remember, maybe your first car that you ever had, yeah. How many electronics was in this car? How many automated functions uh, have been there? Um, and uh, now it's it's not that you only have one function in such a uh, control unit, yeah. You have. Uh, from time to time, uh, uh, hundreds of functions that need to be guaranteed here. And by the same time where you have to deal with the growing complexity and the growing functionality, uh, um, you have the growing complexity here yeah, that uh, uh, more and more interfaces will come up with our hardware here. Um, we need a lot of variants. We have platform development. We need reuse here to make sure we are faster in developing, faster in uh, giving an idea of what the product might look like. Uh, reuse to make sure it's cheaper or we can have a kind of platform that we can reuse a lot of parts here. And last but not least, we have requirements regarding safety and security. Um, and uh, this is where a lot of companies learned that um, uh, it is necessary to have really established processes, an established and structured approach to develop the electronic parts here. And I think this was really where um, uh, the starting point of Hardware Spice was, um, that um, when the, uh, the people started to work with the ISO 26262 here, functional safety in road vehicles, this is where they found out, um, oh, uh, to be able to include all these requirements that are now coming from this standard here, yeah, mandatory requirements, in order to include, include those requirements, this was where we need a structured approach. We need um, a documented and structured way of development and uh, the people heard, hey, Automotive Spice is a help here. Yeah? Automotive Spice will help us with system development, with software development, but what about hardware development? And this is why um, you know, this uh, standard for hardware development uh, was very uh, interesting for ex uh, especially those companies uh, introducing uh, functional safety or processes for functional safety. I used the word spice, I think, now a couple of times, but um, to be honest, uh, I don't know whether everybody of you already is familiar with uh, what is spice here, yeah? what is the idea, and this is why, okay, let's give it some time uh, to talk about what is spice and how is it used. So SPICE itself is an abbreviation, it stands for Software Pros Improvement and Capability Determination. 
Yes, uh, software. Um, sorry for this. This is historical. Yeah. <laughs> when Spice was introduced the first time, it was for software development. And um, this was the idea. And over the years, the people found out, OK, software is not everything. Yeah? Uh, we need complete systems. And uh, this is why we identified we need hardware. We need mechanical development. But they still kept the name software in this abbreviation here yeah? because this is historical. I think the word SPICE is more known than uh, the uh, original standard that was the basic of uh, the SPICE. More important is uh, the other part of this abbreviation, pros improvement and capability determination, because this is exactly what SPICE is for. Yeah? What is the idea of SPICE? And this is, first of all, to identify possibilities to improve your development processes. So you see, it is for your processes. Yeah? I know we talk about products at the end, but the idea is that better processes, better quality in your processes, they will lead to better quality of your product. And this is why we concentrate on the development processes you use. And every time where you use those processes, doesn't matter whether they are already documented somewhere, written down, checked, yeah, or whether they're only in your mind, Every time where you use those processes, there might be an idea of, hey, this could be a better way. This could be a faster way. This could be more easy for us. Yeah? Or this could be something where we can have less problems, less, less failures we uh, do during development. And uh, the idea of SPICE is to give you ideas where to improve your processes. And uh, this is what you will see what will come out of such an assessment that is performed for SPICE uh, to deliver a couple of ideas for improvement of your processes. And this is, by the way, um, the uh, main idea for the implementation of hardware SPICE at the moment that companies see on the one hand, this is the process we're using today, and these are the ideas for improvements. So it is their own idea to improve their processes, their approaches for development. But on the other side, there is a second um, idea of SPICE, and this is to check the capability of your development processes. So to have a kind of rating at the end to tell you, OK, you only have basic processes here. Uh, you have really established perform processes, so you know what you're doing here. Um, and this is where you see different capability levels defined in SPICE to be able to measure the capability. And this is typically more the external view yeah, where the people can see uh, or the customer can see whether uh, you are able to reach a certain capability. But all this definition in SPICE, this is where you see um, is only what is expected. So hardware SPICE will just tell you what is expected. What is it what you need to do? But this information is not enough for your developers. So every time where you implement hardware spice, you cannot use hardware spice uh, to to develop according to this. This is where you need a definition of how is it done here, yeah? what methods need to be used, what roles are responsible, what documents need to be created, um, what metrics do you use during development. And this is your turn. Yeah? This is where you have to define your standard processes, where you define how this should be done in the projects, because the projects, this is what uh, yeah, is, let's say, the, the third level here, the doing level here. Yeah? This is where they perform a kind of tailoring. So adjustment of the standard process to the situation of the project. So you never work according to SPICE itself. Here. Uh, you work according to a standard process, and the standard process should cover the definitions, the ideas, the requirement of SPICE here. So SPICE defines only what is expected, not how. This is, by the way, the most Im important information about SPICE, um, I can tell you, because uh, this is a misinterpretation of many, many people, many, many companies um, yeah, that expect something else here. So, but today I will give you a little bit of information, even how this is typically done, because I think this is what you're interested in. 
So the um, version uh, we're talking about today is, is Hardware Spice. Yeah. So the Hardware Spice you see here uh, is provided by the Intex. So there had been a uh, working group of the Intex defining this model. And this model, Hardware Spice, in the version 2.0 that is uh, published or that is available by now, um, this is dealing with hardware development and this is the meaning of um, electronical development. So hardware in terms of electronics. Uh, let's see what um, is the, yeah, let's say the product you're developing here uh, with this version. And this is where I just would like to give you an idea, maybe first of all, of a system here yeah, uh, that is developed. Uh, you see uh, um, here a steering system here, and this is where you know it is uh, a complex product with many, many parts here. And we're focusing now on one small piece here, and this is the electronic part. And this electronic part, this is where um, the hardware is defined. And you see the idea of hardware spice is to identify different levels here. You have overall the hardware itself here. So the complete integrated hardware, uh, what is called hardware. And this is broken down, first of all, in hardware components, typically broken down in hardware parts here. And all these elements together, they should be the hardware. And so this is the standard definition as you can see in hardware spice. Hardware means an assembled and interconnected physical hardware components or parts here, uh, the different levels here, which perform analog or digital functions or operations. Um, the best idea to give you is given here in the note even a PCB. Here. Typically a PCB is a typical part of hardware development uh, that is in focus here of uh, the, uh, uh, the SPICE model I'm going to present you here. So to learn a little bit about, let's say, the, the family of SPICE, yeah, uh, the, the models that are available, um, this is where I can uh, give you a short idea of uh, the difference between what is system, what is hardware, what is product. Yeah. This is an, let's say, example of um, a product uh, that might be uh, developed. Uh, on the lowest level, you see uh, the domains here. You see a software domain, a hardware domain, and a mechanical uh, domain here. Uh, you see again here the hardware starting with the parts uh, growing or combining to components, and then you have the complete hardware. You have at the same level the mechanical part and the software part, and this is integrated. And um, in reality, you will typically have uh, uh, different kinds of integrations here. And this is why I put it side by side that you, for example, perform on the one hand a hardware software integration to see whether the PCB works with uh, the software that uh, is developed for it or a mechanical hardware integration uh, to check the connections here, here to check dynamics, for example. Um, and um, so you have different levels of integration. And at the end, you have the complete system here yeah, this is where everything is combined on the highest level uh, where typically you have the product and this is by the way on the same time an idea for you um, when you uh, want to introduce a standard like spice in your company think about your product stru uh, structure what is your product looking like um, what is the highest level? What are the, the parts you can split here, the components here? Uh, uh, do you have one hardware or several hardwares? And try to draw a picture like this for your products in your company, uh, because I think this is the first idea uh, or the first uh, the, the best way to get a first idea of um, how to um, assign at the end uh, these models of SPICE. And I will do it now with um, your uh, my uh, example I'm going to show you here. Um, this is where you see, first of all, we have Automotive Spice. And Automotive Spice is all about the software development on the left side and the system development. We have one model. It's for Mechanical Spice. This is everything about the right side. And then in the middle, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, we have the Hardware Spice. Yeah, this is where um, we define um, uh, our activities for the complete hardware, for the components, and for the parts that are developed here. Let's dig a little bit deeper into this hardware spice here in the middle. 
And when you open the model of hardware SPICE, then you will see um, it includes only four processes. This means a complete development typically will have more than only those four processes, but um, this is where you need to combine hardware SPICE with the automotive SPICE, for example, here yeah, uh, to see the um, your, uh, the connection of your electronic to the rest of your system here. But let's focus first of all on those four um, uh, processes here in hardware SPICE. And this is what you can see on this slide. So you have four processes. They have an abbreviation again here. HWE, one, two, three, and four. You see they are presented more or less like a V uh, because it is the idea of a V again, here, starting with hardware requirements analysis, uh, continue with the hardware design, and then you know on the right side of the V, um, you perform a verification against its input here, and this means a verification against the design and verification against the requirements. Um, hardware SPICE is defined the same way than uh, you may be already familiar with uh, from Automotive SPICE. So uh, you have a definition of the process, you have a couple of so-called base practices, an idea of best practices, what you should do, and this is what I showed you already here, yeah, this is the definition of what is expected. So you see, it's a very simple idea, a very simple structure uh, that is defined here in hardware development. Yeah, talking about, hey, please define your requirements. Yeah, uh, define what the hardware needs to do, what functions should be included, uh, create a design. Yeah, everything that you need for uh, the production of uh, um, uh, of prototypes of the uh, the electronic part here, and then perform a couple of verifications against these inputs. In reality, you will see that um, when you want to integrate those four elements, um, there are different ideas of how this typically works in your company. And this is where, for example, uh, the companies found out that the requirements analysis that you perform here in the first process, this is typically nothing new in your company. Um, hopefully, your hardware developers already know yeah, what a requirement is and how to define a requirement or yeah, how to analyze a requirement. Uh, if not, just use a standardized method uh, of your company because it doesn't matter whether you work with hardware requirements or with software requirements, with system requirements here, there is no difference, not in the method that you use. So define and use a standardized method for uh, requirements. And this is where you will see in most companies, they even use the same tool here, uh, the same structure for the requirements, the same attributes, for example. A little bit more tricky is the idea of hardware design in the hardware SPICE model. And uh, this is where you, uh, on a detailed look, will see that there is a separation in the hardware SPICE. Inside of this process, you will see two um, sub-steps. And it's a separation, first of all, in the idea of architecture. And architecture, in the meaning of hardware SPICE, means uh, everything about handling of complex hardware. You have a complex hardware. Remember the overall picture here, yeah, the definition I showed you that you know your complex hardware need to be broken down maybe in components, maybe even subcomponents, subcomponents until you are at the lowest level at the parts. And this is the idea of architecture here. Yeah, try to split your complex hardware into smaller parts and uh, to perform a make or buy or maybe reuse decision. Yeah? What is completely new? What is maybe a standardized part that we can uh, buy yeah, for this hardware? And what is maybe a reuse? We already know this part of the hardware. We can reuse it from an existing uh, um, project. This is the idea of architecture. And um, yeah, to be honest, uh, it's here, typically uh, will not be necessary in each and every development. If you have really, um, let's say, simple structure of the hardware, it might not be necessary in this detail, but for make, buy, reuse decision, I think it's pretty helpful. I think uh, it is just a little bit tricky to tell the hardware development, the hardware developers, uh, what is the idea of architecture, because this is something that you uh, know from system level or software level, but not really in hardware development. 
The other part of the separation is then the design, and this is about the hardware layout. This is, I think, what you already know. Um, then you have a kind of handover to the sub-supplier for manufacturing of the prototypes. So you see everything about prototyping not defined here in SPICE. Here You just hand over the layout with all the information, and then you get some prototypes. And on the right side, you will have the um, your verification, and this is where, uh, in reality, typically an initial hardware check is performed, typically by the sub-supplier already, here, getting the PCB, checking whether it has been uh, um, your manufactured manufactured as defined in the layout here. Very often I see that hardware 3 and 4 are combined, so it might be combined. Please, the idea or the structure of hardware spice is nothing mandatory. You do not have to define processes that exactly look like hardware spice. Um, just the other way around, I would suggest Please define your own processes. Use your own structure, something that is uh, close to your real world, yeah, to your development. And if you see, you have only one combined step because you have the same equipment for verification that is used here, uh, the, the same method that are used, maybe the same people that are doing this verification, then okay, it's okay, combine it. I think uh, the only problem is uh, with the uh, hardware assessors, uh, and this is when I will come and visit you in your company and perform an assessment for hardware development. This is where I need to find out, okay, this is combined here, so I need to perform an interview for both processes, but with the same people here. And last but not least, uh, hardware tests. Um, not all hardware tests are typically performed on this level already here, yeah, only on hardware level. From time to time, you will see that hardware tests need to be performed at system level as well here, yeah, uh, because uh, you need the target software, for example, to uh, uh, check everything. So this is where you have a, a decision on what requirements can be verified on hardware alone and what need to be verified later on system level. And what you can see with this example here already that um, here I used two different words here. Uh, the hardware talks about verification and I talk about test here in this uh, uh, step. And this may be uh, um, here uh, uh, to, for, for better understanding. This is because for hardware, you do not perform only uh, a test here. Typically, you know it already. Uh, Part of verification is as well to perform simulations, air prototyping, etc. So it's not only the pure test, it is as well a couple of different methods that are used for verification. And this is the idea of this hardware three and four processes. Uh, okay, Timo, um, testing, hardware testing is clear, but we do not always face uh, pure hardware development. Um, what about electromechanical development, drives, locks, you name it? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, th exactly. So I think I mentioned already uh, the, the structure is not mandatory. And uh, you're right. In reality, it's not only that we have maybe different steps here. We even have uh, um, uh, electromechanical parts that need to de be uh, developed. So um, to answer your question, so first of all, um, uh, Everything that is part of our real development. One example is tool development, yeah, where you need to develop uh, production tools that need to be de developed as well, yeah, or even software tools somewhere uh, within the development. And um, you might use Spice for this as well. It's not mandatory. It's not part of the the model itself, but yeah, uh, let's say it's not forbidden. But I think more interesting is really uh, here. Yeah, this example you see on the right side. This is. A typical um, electromechanical component, and um, I think it's pretty tricky when you really have in your company those electromechanical uh, parts, um, and you know there is maybe even there is one team responsible for this part for many many years. Yeah, they work together and they deal with both with the uh, mechanical part and with the hardware part. Yeah, they have the knowledge. Um, is it necessary to to split it now up? Yeah, what about those electromechanical components? Um, so for spice, first of all, for spice, you will see this is still a combination of hardware and mechanics. This means for spice, it is called a system. Uh, you would need to use the system processes of the um, uh, automotive spice. This is first of all the idea. But in reality, um, 
No, it is not necessary to now split it. Yeah, split electromechanical components uh, to have a better mapping for spice. Yeah, it's only a basic structure. It is not a mandatory structure. So it is not necessary that you say, "Hey, please just concentrate on hardware." use the processes, concentrate on mechanical development and use those processes. No, typically, um, I would suggest for those components that you, based on your product structure, identify your development activities for this. Yeah. So, and this is where you will see, oh, look for our electromechanical components. We will define the requirements, we will have a design and we will perform the test. And if you want to define now your standard processes, you can combine it using the models. And if you use the models, you will see the structure of the um, processes in hardware, the pros and mechanics and the process and software is pretty much the same. And you have a couple of notes giving you additional information about what is explicitly necessary for hardware development. And this is where you can start with your combination. And just as an example here, you have an activity in your standard process, specify requirements of an electromechanical component here. This would be an activity of your real process here that fits to your product. And to create this definition in your standard process, you use um, the idea of uh, the mechanical spice, where you can see, hey, specify mechanical requirements, what is interesting, what need to be covered by this, and looking in hardware spice, specify hardware requirements. So what is an example of hardware requirement that should be included? And both are combined into your process uh, definition here. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, the theory is understood, um, but how does it look like in reality? Do you have any example here? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so how does it look like in reality? Um, tricky here yeah? <laughs> because uh, every component is different, every hardware is different, and um, this is, to be honest, the reason why uh, SPICE defines only what is expected and not how, because for every uh, uh, hardware, it might look different. And this is why we have only this principal structure. But to give you maybe a better un, uh, understanding, yeah, I have an example. So let's have a look at an example. And I thought about uh, a very small board here uh, that is providing um, traffic lights. And I think traffic light is pretty easy. You know it already, yeah, green, yellow and red and here yeah, uh, it might change. Uh, this is something uh, that might be developed and we just look at this small board with this function. And for this, this would mean we perform the hardware one process, hardware requirements analysis. And this means we have functional and non-functional requirements for this hardware I just mentioned. Uh, we know the function of this small traffic light here, yeah, light on, light off and so on. Um, we need to read an electrical input somewhere that will tell us, hey, please switch light. We need to interact with the software uh, for the defined modes here yeah, because this change, light on, light off, is something that is typically then done in, in software maybe. Uh, we need to control the different modes here. We need to turn an LED on and off here, yeah, so different functions here. We need to give feedback in case of failure and this is uh, especially for, for functional safety an important topic. We might have something about performance performance or uh, air that this is visible even by sunlight and so on. So a couple of non-functional requirements might be addressed here as well. And based on this generic description now in hardware one, yeah, so my example here is, let's say, um, a very, very brief example of a hardware requirement specification. But based on this specification, we start with a hardware design. And to have an idea of what might be already an architecture here for this, uh, this is where a block diagram might be very useful. And this is what you can see here. Oh, I need to use the pointer here. Yeah, this is where you know uh, you have a very, very simple drawing about the elements here that you know, oh, uh, we have an ECU here, we have the LEDs as element, uh, we have uh, an interface somewhere, uh, we know there are connections there, there need to be an inter information flow uh, between ECU and LED, and all together it is the PCB, and this is where, for example, you would identify, hey, the LED, uh, this is something we will not develop here, we will buy this part. And maybe the interface, hey, this is something we know from the previous project, let's reuse this part. 
Based on this, you typically think about Kirkwood diagrams already. Yeah? So uh, how is it looking like? And this is where uh, uh, yeah, you can use all your experience in electronic development to draw such a Kirkwood diagram. I just used a, a small part of this picture here. And you typically have the layout at the end where you really have the idea of this is how it should be implemented at the end, really showing here yeah, the connectors here, uh, showing where the elements need to be placed uh, to define the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the distance between uh, uh, the connections here. And based on this, you have the bomb, the bill of material where you know, hey, this is what we need here, please, uh, to create one prototype, we need one red LED, yellow, green, uh, we need the board itself and so on. Um, so, and this is the information that is handed over now for the um, manufacturing of the prototype. That you know, based on layout and bomb, typically uh, uh, it is now uh, uh, manufactured and you have the first prototype. With this prototype, we start the verification. Uh, we start the verification against the hardware design. This means we use this board, the real uh, uh, creative board here, here on the right side now, uh, um, that to check it. And checking of the board would mean, for example, execution uh, uh, according to Kirker diagram. So uh, is it really following uh, the idea of the design? Is it implemented? Uh, uh, are the distances between uh, the, the tracks, is this okay? And you have a specific focus here typically on the interfaces. So for example, here, uh, the LED component to the ECU, uh, uh, on, ECD, oh, ECU, uh, to the interface. So uh, to see um, whether the, the interfaces will, uh, uh, will work here. So is it really connected here? So you see, you have more the focus now on the, uh, on the inside here, on the, uh, uh, the, the overview or the, the look of the, uh, the PCB itself, not about the function so far, because this is the second uh, um, uh, focus here on the uh, verification, and this is included in hardware four, means verification against the requirements. You will check or you will verify now uh, uh, whether uh, the expected functionality is included. Yeah? Can you read the input? Can you turn it on? Can you turn it off? Yeah? Uh, these mode changes, uh, for example, you could do it really um, manually um, yeah, that you uh, uh, do not use the, the real software yeah, that you just uh, trigger, please turn it on, per, turn it off to see whether it works or not. So this is an idea of uh, what is done and after this you have the verified, the tested PCB and then you really can start with the integration here, yeah, uh, putting the correct the, the real, the target software on it, uh, uh, put it somewhere maybe in a chassis of mechanics here, uh, um, use the, the connectors and so on. So then it becomes part of the overall system. So this is, by the way, at the same time, what I as a hardware assessor would ask you for, yeah, when we really would check your hardware development in reality, I would ask you, please show me your hardware requirements, open your specification, let's go through the requirements to see the functional and non-functional requirements. Let's talk about hardware 2 design, please show me what is it what you have, do you have block diagrams, Kirkwood diagrams and so on. Here, how do they fit to each other? So uh, this is where you see reality and the model might differ. This is where you need to know before an assessment uh, what are uh, what is really the idea of our hardware design? What are the um, uh, the work products I'm going to show the assessor? And then talking about the verification, uh, we can show uh, me all the tests that you perform here, but as well talking about what simulations you perform, what uh, uh, um, calculations maybe uh, you perform. This is what I would check as an assessor in a hardware spice assessment. And maybe to get a, give you a better idea of hardware spice assessment, I can show you how this typically works. Uh, this is an assessment agenda. Very easy example here. Yeah? Um, so typically when I come and visit you for an assessment, uh, then I will not perform the assessment only for hardware spies, yeah, because only looking at the four processes, interesting for you, but not for the complete system development that is in focus. Typically it is combined with, combined with automotive spies. And this is where we would start with a short kickoff here, yeah? 
telling you about the agenda, the idea, what is going on in this assessment. And then we will sit together for about a week and I ask you a lot of questions. And you need to show a lot of documents here. Yeah? And um, yeah, I need evidences for everything that you did in your project. And this is where typically I ask was, uh, uh, or I will start with an interview and a lot of questions about project management means how our activities, resources, plan, monitored in your development. We will come to specific interviews about the development, typically starting with the system development. Yeah? What is the idea of the complete system with its requirements and architecture? And then we will really come to this hardware spice, talking about hardware development. I will go through the four processes here. Yeah? Typically, this is what I would expect but maybe you have a different world. You're yeah, talking about the requirements, design and verification steps. And this is where from your side, a hardware designer will participate and FMEDA expert maybe when you really do calculations on the hardware metrics, uh, maybe even people from manufacturing talking about a uh, verification is performed already there or yeah, you already uh, uh, include them here in the development part. The hardware test, um, I'm pretty sure will be uh, included. And we will continue with interviews, questions about configuration management, how are the results of the development controlled and directed, and this is specific or there are some specific uh, interpretations for hardware as well, because you know here yeah, you have a couple of um, uh, sample parts maybe, yeah, uh, prototypes um, that need to be controlled, versioned as well uh, for the development here. We talk about how do you uh, handle problems and changes here during the development, specific for hardware, but for the complete system as well. We will talk about the supplier monitoring here to see, uh, hey, when you really uh, put some activities to external parties here, here when you uh, know our parts of the development are done by someone else, how this is planned and tracked. And talking about quality assurance, how do you ensure the quality of um, your uh, development? And for the hardware part, this would mean, for example, uh, do you check, do you review the, the, um, the requirements you have? Do you perform a design review, uh, a design freeze maybe, and so on? So talking about quality assurance activities, uh, again, for the complete development. And um, here, finally, the presentation for results. And what I already mentioned, this is where you will see um, all these questions, they refer to complete development. So it is not only uh, uh, the hardware development, it's the complete system development. And this is, to be honest, where um, a lot of questions for hardware already are um, asked during automotive spice assessment right now. This is where an assessor will come and uh, uh, perform an assessment in your company and find out, hey, you have a lot of interfaces to your hardware development. Please, do you have an expert that can join uh, this um, uh, assessment and give us a little bit of information? How do you handle those interfaces? And this is why I would really um, uh, suggest that you Think about the hardware spice already now that you prepare your uh, uh, people in uh, uh, understanding the structure, understanding our processes, because although it might not be asked by your customer uh, at the moment, but it will be relevant for assessments more and more often. Um, and this is, um, I can just tell you, please be prepared. Here yeah, at the end, we have the presentation of the results and then you have a result that might look like this. And this is where you see uh, what the model of SPICE typically looks like. Uh, you see um, the process dimension here on the left side. Uh, this is where you see all the processes where I performed the interviews. And you see just in between here, uh, we have hardware one, two, three and four. So uh, it is the same way of assessment as for the parts of system uh, of the uh, or automotive spice. So it's combined in this result here. And then this is presented for the different capability levels. And at the end here, based on this detailed um, rating here with this N where nothing is there here, uh, the P where I see, yes, you have an idea of how to do it, but honestly, it's not really in implemented yet. 
and an L is a largely yeah where you can see okay you already do it but I have some ideas for improvement and the green one the F fully so yes this is uh, performed already and at the end you will see what is your capability level so is it zero when well, you see hey a lot of work to do for you um, is it one is it two is it three and um, this is what an assessment result typically looks like mm, Timo another yes. question um, typically, when, when making a development, uh, you have uh, relationships to other um, standards. Is there any re relationship between hardware space and other standards? Yeah, yeah, uh, indeed. So it is not only part of the, the spice world. Yes, it is necessary to think about those other standards as well. Uh, first of all, um, there is a close relationship to the 6949, so the IETF. The IETF is um, uh, this is what you can see here in, in this overview. Um, the uh, 6909 is based on the ISO 9001. Uh, it is about quality management systems, yeah, requirement for quality management systems in automotive production. And yes, the electronics is part of the production here, and there are a lot of requirements. Um, the objective of the 6909 is to have a process-oriented system for quality management, to have a uh, continuous improvement in place uh, uh, to prevent defects here and to reduce variation or uh, waste uh, during the development already. So it is all about quality and this is as well the idea of uh, hardware spice. Um, you see on the right side hardware spice, this is about here yeah, pros improvement, capability determination for the hardware engineering. You have pretty much the same idea here. Identify improvements, yeah. So continual improvement. Uh, I identify uh, um, uh, defects as soon as possible during the development. But the different focus is typically that the hardware spice yes. looks on the development side and the IETF standard looks more on the production side. And you will see everything that is about development in the 69th or 9 is very, very generic. And uh, this is where um, Hardware Spice could help you to see um, it's not that we have to develop the hardware um, as we want. No, we need really a definition here, a structured approach for this uh, um, uh, development here. The method that is used to check against the standards is different and there is really a huge difference between an audit that you uh, have here for the 6949 here. Yeah. This is really out of an audit you will see, yes, it was successful or it was not successful. Um, for uh, So you will have a certificate typically at the end. For hardware spice, this is different. There is no certificate. You have an assessment as I showed you, and you have this profile as we just saw on the slide uh, before. There is already an idea of mapping here. Uh, you will see even Hardware Spice already thinks about, hey, what is mapping to IITF? And this is where you can see um, there are two chapters in the IITF. It's uh, the chapters 8.2 and 8.3 in the IITF 6909. And this is really about the uh, development activities here. It is for electromechanical development. And you see here, it's not really a differentiation between what is hardware, what is mechanics in the IITF standard uh, but this is where um, uh, you would have a more detailed uh, view on the development activities when you look at hardware spice. Um, IETF you know is already established it is mandatory here yeah? you need to be certified uh, according to 69 for 9 for hardware spice no it is used mainly at the moment for internal improvement here. Uh, it is not really required by the customers so far, but from time to time, the customers already start to ask, hey, what is it? Do you work according to standardized processes? Do you work according to hardware spice? And this is why uh, I would say, yes, it will be required in the future uh, because of the dependencies. And besides the requirements of the customer that might come in the future, I can tell you there have been already a couple of audits for IETF where the auditor asked for SPICE, yeah? because they found out 
hey, it's about improvement. Uh, it's about the quality or uh, the sufficiency of your processes. I learned something about another standard that really focus on development processes. So have your processes according to such a standard? Have you performed assessments? Do you or have you co co uh, collected ideas for improvements here? And this is why more and more often uh, the IETF auditors ask for spice. And this is uh, why I would really say, hey, before he asks, you should be prepared and you should work with this standard. Besides the ITF standard, there's a second standard I can show you. And this is, um, I think, well known already that the ISA 26262 is dealing with uh, hardware development as well. I use it for my introduction to tell you, yes, this is where a lot of uh, requirements uh, uh, were uh, yeah, raised, where the companies found out, hey, we need some processes here, let's work with hardware spice. Um, ISA 26262 has been available long before hardware spice, really. Um, but the idea is typically that you know SPICE itself will define the structured approach, that you work according to your yeah, defined processes here, like the four processes I showed you, and then you will start with the ISA 26262 because this standard for functional safety will only give you add-ons, will only tell you what is needed in addition to this standardized approach. And this means here, yeah, um, this ISA 26262, and this is um, here the the overview of uh, the uh, part five uh, of the uh, 26262 about hardware development. This means when you do hardware requirements analysis, um, you will have a detailed chapter here that will tell you, hey, what is specific for safety requirements. You have already implemented the idea of hardware design here yeah, with, remember my example, the layout, the bomb and so on. And this is where you have a chapter about hardware design in the ISO as well to tell you, um, okay, what is uh, uh, in addition to this activity necessary uh, to ensure the functional safety. And the verification is here combined here as well. And this is why I have told you, hey, it's okay to combine the processes. It's hardware integration and verification here in the ISO. So, and they selected two more processes here about uh, evaluation uh, and um, their uh, um, architectural metrics that are calculated based on the design. Uh, this is typically an input for the verification, and this is something that is not really new, uh, that is typically known in hardware development already. Um, uh, using hardware metrics or failure rates here, and this is uh, here detailed information in the ISA 26262 for this. This is combination to functional safety. This is where you can see a uh, pretty good mapping is, is possible here. And you will see when you read Hardware Spice, it includes already a couple of references here to telling you, hey, uh, when you perform this activity, this is the additional information of the 26262 uh, that you have to keep in mind here. One standard is missing, to be honest, and this is cybersecurity. Um, and this is because, uh, yeah, cybersecurity, um, it is new, uh, maybe not that new for us, but um, yeah, it is still uh, a topic where you have, we have to learn here yeah, about the requirements in the future. And cybersecurity um, is not uh, uh, defining really detailed requirements for hardware. And this is why I, I was not addressing this here. Um, for cybersecurity, I can tell you, you can check the ISO uh, 21434. You will see it is about development itself uh, in general here, yeah, not talking specifically about what is electronic development, what is software. Uh, it defines requirements for all the kind of development. But uh, there would be a mapping possible as well. And um, you're talking about SPICE, there is uh, or have been introduced the um, addition for uh, automotive SPICE for cybersecurity. There is no part of hardware included yet. So hardware SPICE is not mandatory, let's say, for uh, cybersecurity uh, when it comes to assessments, but there is a mapping to cybersecurity as well. Yeah, that's the information I wanted to give you. And before you have the chance to ask some questions, I will uh, sum it up with uh, two um, here, collections of challenges and benefits. What I would like to give you to keep in mind uh, after this webinar, first of all, talking about challenges, 
you see it is really difficult to have a mapping of the processes uh, since development processes typically they do not correspond to the structure of hardware spice you have a different structure in your company than the hardware spice here yeah? and your structure is older so please first of all define your structure uh, for example, based on the idea of your product structure that you know, hey, this is uh, the development as it is really performed in our company and then perform the mapping to the hardware spice. Another challenge is uh, uh, about all the definitions that you see here. here. Um, they uh, developed the hardware spice based on the idea of automotive spice and from time to time you will have to translate a lot of words here and yeah, when you just come to a hardware developer and say hey please uh, create your architecture perform a test here yeah, or something like this uh, he will have no idea maybe on what you expect so you have to translate this in your processes and yeah, use your words in the processes Something that is not included really in the hardware spice uh, um, is uh, the handling of the complex hardware really here um, where you really can see um, uh, we need a make or buy decision or an idea of where is it placed. I showed you already. This is what typically can be done on architectural level here. This is what an architecture might be useful for, uh, but is not defined in detail uh, what is expected or recommended here. And as well, what an integration or how an integration of uh, those complex hardware uh, is performed. The idea is that you can perform it based on the system processes of automotive spice, um, but this is where you typically miss the detailed ideas or recommendations for hardware development. Uh, the interface to manufacturing, yeah, it is rarely defined, only a few sentences, but nothing about this. And I think this is a, a huge challenge for everybody uh, uh, in the companies here, yeah, uh, the interface manufacturing development. And safety and cybersecurity, they expect a structured approach here. But on the other side, we have a couple of benefits uh, in my point of view. And this is, uh, first of all, working with um, uh, the hardware spies, uh, discussing with the people in assessments, for example, performing interviews. This is where you can create a better understanding of the process, yeah, what the process they use so far, uh, to identify possible improvements here yeah, by recognizing what are risks or problems so far. Uh, enable a better communication, yeah, especially when you have distributed teams here talking about process interfaces, to identify similar approaches here yeah, using synergies, uh, to use a buzzword here, um, um, and to be ready for the future, I have to say it again, yeah, customer requirements, they will change. Customers from time to time already ask for hardware spice, maybe not for an assessment, but to see the processes and to be ready for implementation of safety security. It is easier to implement this when you have already process in place. And hey, if you already need processes, why not using hardware spice? And that's it. That's from my side. Hopefully you see. There are benefits here, yeah, and um, uh, it is a good idea uh, to deal with this, but I think you already know that this will be a future requirement for you, for your companies, and this, this will be really a useful support for your process definition and your development, because otherwise, I think you would not have been here in this webinar. And so, thank you from my side. I'm open for questions now, um, so please feel free. Um, besides what you told us, uh, Timo, it is, it is demanded and requested by the OEMs, so it will come up. So, um, okay, um, we have dozens of questions, so I'm afraid I have to pick some generic questions. May cover others. Maybe Timo will find a solution to answer the the, uh, the participants, um, but I will I'll pick some now. Uh, we have this verification process, HWE 3 and 4, and the question is, does reviews satisfy HWE 3 and 4? <laughs> um, it's uh, time for the classical answer of assessors. Um, it depends. <laughs> um, uh, it depends on what are you reviewing. If you are reviewing the requirements or the design itself here, yeah, no, it is not sufficient because it is still the idea of implementation. But a review of the real implementation of the real PCB, 
looking at the PCB, maybe with a kind of checklist to see, yes, this is done, this is done. This would be an uh, um, one way of verification. But typically, in reality, you will have a combination of reviews and other methods here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is about the um, 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 configuration management. For example, does it only address the hardware configuration items or in, in assessments or the uh, system and software configuration items as well? Oh, someone addressed now the gap in auto motor spies. Um, <laughs> configuration management, the process sub eight of configuration management is defined in auto motor spies version 3.1 and was written um, with focus on system and software development. When they developed the hardware spies, they found out hey, a lot of things that we would expect for configuration management of hardware is not written in this process so far. So, and this is why at the moment I can just give you a lot of interpretation uh, help here. What is the idea of implementation of uh, uh, configuration management for hardware development? Um, and hopefully when uh, in future the new version of Automotive Spice 4.0 is available, we will have a detailed interpretation for hardware itself. Um, but in an assessment, coming to the question, um, if there is an interview for configuration management, I'm interested in the complete development. So the complete product, including system, software, hardware, mechanics. Okay. Uh, do any OEMs so far require assessments based on hardware spice or as well on uh, mechanical spice? Oh, uh, so they ask for processes from time to time. Um, they are not really going into detail, so they are not performing assessments so far. I have no, I, I know nothing about an already uh, performed uh, mandatory assessment from an OEM. Not yet, but I'm pretty sure there will be in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, question is, uh, what about the one assessment with result capability level two is already done? So the system was good and um, uh, hardware spies will have to check a lot of processes again. Uh, for example, the supporting processes as well. Yeah. Is exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. that, that's it. Uh, you will have to, um, maybe not the complete detail if you already have this knowledge about, hey, the processes are already in place, but you still have to see whether uh, project management is covering everything of hardware development and quality assurance is performing uh, quality assurance activities for hardware as well and so on. Yeah. yeah. So again, I think we can make one question because it's uh, time up now. Uh, how um, how um, platforms will be managed? Um, so platform versus application, for example, uh, what about a legacy design um, when doing hardware spice um, assessment? So how will this be taken into consideration? Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Let's see. Um, so far, I can tell you, so there's nothing about platform development or legacy uh, in, in hardware development uh, in the model here. There's nothing defined in the hardware model uh, so far. Uh, I think it will depend a little bit on uh, the assessors. Just if you're already familiar with Automotive Spice, it is pretty much the same situation then for uh, about uh, 20 years ago when uh, we performed the first assessments for Automotive Spice here um, that we need to collect a lot of experience first of all and then we can uh, update um, uh, the the model and we can uh, learn about how to perform assessments in hardware as well here yeah, I think we need to uh, first of all the experience with the assessments before we can answer really how this should be done okay I think time is up um, so I would say um, Thank you, Timo, and thank you for, for participating and ask, uh, asking so many questions. Um, unfortunately, the time is limited, so we cannot answer everybody, but I think we will find a way to um, to um, give you the answers, maybe by email. Maybe you can contact uh, Timo if um, your answer, your question was not answered here. 
So thank you. What you see here is uh, uh, what's the next training dates from process fellows. Um, we currently we do not have a webinar scheduled so far, and uh, you can have a look on it. You will get. There was a question if the um, slides will be available. The answer is yes. Um, they will be provided. So uh, and as well, there is a recording uh, ongoing, and this uh, webinar will be. Uh, upload it to YouTube so that you can watch it later again. Okay, thank you, Timo. Thank you for participating and for the interesting questions. Um, hopefully, see you next time for the next webinar. Maybe see you uh, for trainings um, and then we can have a deeper look. Okay, thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Bye. Bye.